Okay, here I have one of these uh, 30 volt 10 amp power supplies, which I think is a switch mode one uh, off eBay. It's a Kweets, Kweets, something like that. Just a Chinese thing, got LED displays on the front of it, and I think it's got current limit, variable current limit as well, as well as variable power supply voltage, so 0 to 30 volts or low voltage to 30 volts. I'll open it up and have a look. I haven't seen one of these in the flesh. I'll uh, just find a knife. And we'll see what we got here. That's why you don't stick the knife in too deep because there's a, a manual for it. Something you don't see that often these days is a user manual. We've got the, Manual, what have I got here? I've got some, yeah, some it's actually got test probes for the leads, which is a bit odd for a power supply, but anyway, I've got a normal power cord. I did ask them if this thing it was rated at 110 volts, but they assured me that it does run on 240 volts as well. That's more like what you'd expect your leads for your power supply to look like. A couple of clip leads, two banana plugs. This out of the box, probably turn it upside down. Whoops. Get rid of that. Come off. Oh, so there we have it. Very light. So definitely a switch mode. Good. Oh, yeah, I can see inside it now. A lot of inductors and stuff. So definitely a little switch mode power supply there. Oh, the displays are quite decent size. I wasn't sure exactly how big this thing was, but it's about the size I expected. You never know from these photos. Displays are a good size. You've got a USB connector on the front, which I think is just an out. So you can charge stuff off it or run mobile phones or stuff if you're working on them. Coarse voltage, fine voltage, and then current limit, fine and coarse. Someone did say in the reviews of it that the knobs were a bit agricultural or something, which and I guess to be fair they're not, not the nicest things, but they feel alright, they do do the job. On the back we've got a fan, oh yeah, we've got a 220 volt switch there. I assume that the other setting on that is 110. Yeah, so it's switchable 110 to 20. So I've got a fuse in there and our IEC socket for the power cord. So I guess we might as well plug this in and see what it does. And a moment of truth. Mm, nice bright displays there and quite a good size. So yeah, around 30 volts max. And it does actually say it's going right down to zero volts, which is rare that most of them will do that. Let's try and get, say, 12 volts, I guess. Oh, yeah, there's your fine voltage adjustment. You can really... We can go from 11.56 to 12.08. That's just with that cool setting set wherever but gives you a bit over a half a volt range I guess let's go to 9 volts closest I can get it is around there somewhere a little bit off and then I'm already at one end of that range which doesn't help that goes here more like 0.7 volts or something that range that's 9 volts right it's up a limit I guess the next thing is to get the old trusty fluke multimeter. Oh, hit the wrong knob. I wanted to hit the fine one. Let's get that to exactly 9 volts on their meter. 
and see what the fluke says. When it wakes up, 8.99, so they seem to be pretty spot on. Let's go to the full, let's try and get 30 volts on it. Yeah, these course controls, a little bit hard to set exactly what you want. 30 point, even the fine's not the best. Uh, so the fine's not working up in the 30 volt range. There it is, I've got 30 exactly. 29.96. So fairly close. Um, I guess the next thing would be to hook a load up. But yeah, this course control is pretty coarse. So the least, yeah, so we jump. You can set it reasonably accurately. Sometimes these digital displays are a bit slow to respond. Now there was a light bulb line around here I was going to hook up. Let's try some old school incandescent lamp. fit very nicely. Oh, there we go, it does push it in the end, it just was a bit tight. So that's okay. Mm, very slippery feeling. I can't get that. <laughs> Every time I try and squeeze this alligator clip, it just slides around inside the... That one seemed alright. Yeah, that one's perfect. This other positive one just slides around inside the... The red plastic, that's rubbish by the look of it. Yeah, no, that's a pretty, that's rubbish. Yeah, it's been bent or squashed or something. I mean, that, I don't think it was the packaging, it's probably just made rubbish in the first place. Let's try and fix it a bit, I'll probably just make it worse, but. Ugh. Well, it is a little bit better than it was because it does seem to actually be slightly usable now, which is better than, yeah, not the best, but... So that's like a, uh, I think that's a 10 watt lamp, is it? 21 watt. That's like a brake light. So it's pulling 1.74 amps, and uh, there's our wattage, 20.88 for a 21 watt lamp. So that's another feature of these things I've got. They tell you the wattage, so work out your volts times amps, basically, for you, which is handy. If you want to test light globes and stuff, I guess, and see what wattage they are, or other things to get an idea. Normally wattage isn't something you really worry about, you just worry about setting something to the voltage it needs, and check if it's what the current is, and whether the power, can, power supply can supply it, or whether it's drawing what it should be. But it is kind of a handy feature. Just as a bit of a novelty. Now, if we turn the current limiting down, oh yeah, we can turn the light off. So we've now got our current limit kicked in. I guess the only thing is not knowing. Oh, maybe that is showing us. Oh, so it's showing us what the amps. Oh yeah, so it's actually actually just a variable output in many ways. We can get the light bulb. A lot of these things will just go into like a protection mode and lower the current right down. Looks like this, you can basically. And now we've gone back to the normal voltage. Once we get above that sort of 21 watt, or up, up around that 21 watt, then it doesn't matter what I do. So we could probably precisely work out. Exactly. What wattage this lamp is. So, that's, so if we tweak that, will it flick back? Oh yeah, it just flicks back. That seems to have to come back quite a bit before it goes off again. Anyway, that shows that that's working all right. I wouldn't mind hooking up like a car headlight or something to see what it does with a really big load on it, because 
My other power supply is having a bit of trouble once it gets above 5 amps. Got this old Subaru lamp here. I think it's a high beam only. I can't see where it says the wattage. I guess we can hook this thing up and we can find out what wattage it is. So I guess if you've got a lamp with the ratings rubbed off it. Oh, might need to set my set my current limit to maximum. Because that was cutting in. Now we're getting there. So that's pulling 44 watts. This is not an awful lot. I would have thought it would be a bit more than that. 3.7 amps. So yeah, that's not a particularly bright light bulb, that one. Yeah, 44 seems rather low for a... Usually they're at least around 55 watts or something. But yeah, the, the ratings have rubbed off that one if it ever had them on it. Okay, let's look at a different one. I forget which terminal is the common on these. So we're pulling 4 amps, yeah, that's 52 watts and a... 52 and a bit, whoops. So that's to show they may not always pull their rated amount. up wrong I may get both elements happening and that's more like 60 watts so 55 60 watts it sounds pretty legit for your normal headlight and with this power supply I should be able to hook up both of them simultaneously which is yeah give me 9 amps and 108 watts Yep, so that can go right up. If I can get both to hook up, let's get towards the rated power output of this amp, this power supply. So it goes to show it can put out 9 amps, no problem. Don't know how long it runs that before the fan kicks in, but at least it's got a fan if you really do heat this thing up. Yeah, that looks, looks pretty good. This would be good for testing like car amplifiers and stuff that have a high current draw. I guess the only other thing would be to put the oscilloscope on it and see what it's, how clean the signal is out of it. Yeah. Also on the earth to the earth, I guess. Now this plastic cover's coming off. Where's my I'm on DC coupling? Probably should actually go to AC to be honest, but there's a little bit of rubbish there. Let's sit on the very low. And you yeah, really need to shield your leads and stuff. I could be picking up any rubbish at the moment. may well be that I'm actually picking up some sort of external signal. What happens if we load this thing up? Nothing really. Actually yes it does, there is a bit more. So I guess that's a test of the power supply. I'll see if I can get the camera onto that. So normally got a little bit of ripply stuff there when I hook up this lamp. I'm getting a bit more jitter on the screen there. Let's go to DC coupling I guess and just see. Uh, it's jumped up. Probably need to change the position a bit. Can I get that in? No, I'm going to have to go to a higher setting. Seems a bit excessive. Maybe because I tweaked the position, probably. Oh, that's one volt of division. 
or 12 volts I guess yeah that would make sense it is Drop ever so slightly by the look of it. So it doesn't regulate 100%, although the, the meter on the actual device is showing it's still okay. Oscilloscope would suggest it's dropping a little tiny bit. But to be fair, that could be the leads. That's probably the voltage drop over these leads. The actual power supply itself is probably putting out the same voltage at the terminal and at, at its meter. But by the time you have these leads attached, we're probably losing a slight amount. So it shows the leads probably haven't got the thickest copper wire in them. I wouldn't mind betting they're... Yeah, they're pretty puny. 50% plastic at least. But for most uses, that's not going to worry anyone. Yeah, so these leads, you can see where they're soldered on, and you know, there's a lot of plastic around the wire in there. But it might be about a millimetre squared or something of wire, nothing special, but nothing too bad. But yeah, shame that clip lead's a bit crappy. And they're very slippery, these things. Looks like yeah, if you touch the terminals together, at least it's got over voltage protection but yeah these these things slip around all over the place it's hard to actually grab the clip leads what else do they include here a couple of what look like normal multimeter leads but the more leads the better can never have enough leads yeah, so these look like the normal multimeter probes with a little they removable. Are they just um that's just shielding? Uh they're just to protect just to shield more of the tip. See so you've only got the very fine bit sticking out, which is handy, less chance of shorting on things, but why they actually include Oh they don't even they block the holes up. I don't I don't think they're gonna fit on there. So why on earth are they giving me multimeter leads? Maybe if we take that off. Even then it's got some sort of plastic thing in the end there. Oh, it looks like they will attach if you remove the binding posts. Looks like, oh, it's just a bit of muck on there. That's probably got a plastic sheet over that that can be removed. actually connect it up nope <laughs> doesn't seem to be oh no, that one's come loose a bit well, there we go so if you really want to I don't know I guess you could probe around in a circuit it could be an interesting way to fault find really especially with automotive electronics or something it would actually be handy to have a couple of probes you could Probe on like a light bulb like this and see if it lights up. Probe it on some sort of thing you're trying to test in the circuit. So that's not a totally silly idea. But yeah, generally you wouldn't use probes, you normally use clip leads and stuff to power something that you want to test out. But it is also possible you would want to use this in something like, like I say, you could hook this up and use it to replace the, the battery power in a car to power things up and try and trace the circuit back that way. Or if you want to test like um, some trailer lights or something, these I guess would be ideal. Because with the LED ones you can't just measure the continuity anymore. So having something where you could actually probe the connector and put the voltage into it would be quite handy. Now what did I do? Did I switch that off? Or have I lost all power here? Ah. Dunno, it died for some reason. 
That's odd. No, oh, I had to reset it to get it going again. So the fan runs for a bit, I guess, to test the fan out. And the displays are a bit dodgy the way they turn off. Oh, there's a bit of a capacitor or something there. Still powering it up. So they can actually lose a bit of their display. Well, the chip's feeding them changes its display, or the power supply goes down before they actually lose power. Normally, you design it so they blank immediately when power goes off. But this, you know, isn't a quality bit of test gear, but it looks like it'll do the job for what I want. It's nice and compact, for a carry handle if you need it. So, yeah, it could be good for testing stuff in a car or something. And for the price, you really can't complain. It's got a couple of LEDs lit in there to say something's running. Yeah, it generally looks like it's quite well built, just from the outside. I guess we might as well take the lid off and have a look and see what's actually in there. It, might as well unbox it completely. And take it out of its actual box. It is metal. I thought it might have been plastic on the bottom, but it's not. So this does have a metal case on it. Besides the front panel, obviously. So this certainly isn't the Chinese are starting to build some better stuff. I think it's not like the really cheap end of the market. The what is a lower current version of one of these. I think it went up to six amps or something. It's a bit cheaper. But if you get various discounts on eBay and that, you can get these at a pretty good price. It's holding on a bit there. I just need it spreading out a bit. So there you have it. The displays. And just on this board, a couple of uh, multi turn pots here, probably to set the displays. Got that little potentiometer board. It's a capacitor 4760 volts across the output. That's a pretty high, high voltage, but anyway. And yeah, generally it looks quite well built. Got a quite a few surface mount electrolytic capacitors, which are always a worry, but. Any electrolytic capacitors out of China are a bit of a worry anyway. I certainly don't like that electrolytic surface mount being down in amongst those heat sinks. And this other one's basically butted against the heat sink. It's leaning into it, which is a bad design. Because when those things get hot, they'll cook those electrodes. And you don't want your electrolytic capacitors getting cooked because it'll dry them out and they'll fail. But yeah, generally I must say it looks like a pretty decently made bit of equipment. But how long they're going to last, and that's that's going to be the failure point, probably these capacitors and stuff. I'm not sure if that's on the secondary or the primary, that your bridge rectifier. Some of these cuts are here, so we've got a little... Looks like we've got a, a couple of different switch mode power supplies in here. Possibly another one there, come to think of it. There might be some sort of DC-DC converter in the unit. It might even run... Well, I don't think it'll run the displays, but it might. It's got quite a large diode there. Got a very large diode there. Another couple of multi-turn pots. For setting something. It's a bit hard to tell exactly what is the primary of this thing and what's the secondary, but so another transformer there. So there's one, two, three of them that look like they go from 240 volt. Or is that all at 240 volt? And then we've got a a border around this front part here, so maybe that's the final output. I don't know. Our red and black leads go back up here. 
probably to that thing so that that toroid probably removes any digital noise switching stuff that main diode might be the main rectifier to the outputs another big inductor I don't see any particularly large capacitors on the output side that's definitely our input capacitors main chopper transformer those things on the heatsink most likely the main the label is Q21 and 22 this other one actually is a D so that might be the diode on the secondary and what are these capacitors here they don't look like an awful lot 35 volt at 1000 mics so there's a couple of 1000 caps there are probably your main filter caps yeah and these are 400 volt caps over here so that's a, it must be this other little switch mode so it's almost a completely separate switch mode there and I'm not sure what this other one here does but that's got 400 volts and a bridge rectifier so I would assume that's another it's got a connector onto the displays maybe so this is probably a little power spider on the displays but it probably has 240 volts going into it or 110 depending on where you are so I think this is all the secondary stage down here We've got your yeah, voltage for the fan comes out. That's possibly voltage into your um what actually it says here, Con 1 power signal. One of these probably has the fixed voltage for the USB. It's a 12 volt fan, so there'll be a fixed voltage for that I guess. Because you don't want your fan running off your output. four-way connector that goes to the pots so I guess here yeah, we've got chips and stuff here is your potentiometers and they'd feed back somewhere most likely controlling the main switch motor or something to run to change the power fed into the rest of this so you want a couple of power supplies with stable voltages to run LED displays and fans and stuff and probably your main main control circuit here from the pots and that would probably feedback and control the main regulator and what it puts out through through all this other stuff which basically this is all the DC output it to control the chopper transistors here that run this big transformer and they'd probably vary the, the voltage and current straight coming out of that thing and then go through these various filters and big diode filter caps the other diode could be something to do with stopping DC coming back up and like if you're charging a battery or something you want to isolate the outputs so it might be all that is so I think that's our output section just this chopper transformer in this section here and then the wires come out under where this diode is so yeah fairly simple little thing and we'll turn it on here's a couple of so there are a couple of LEDs to show, I assume that switch mode and this other one are running. Which, I mean, if you've got displays on the front, it's probably a good indicator of that anyway. I doubt they've got any LED to show the main one. Well, that would be going up and down in voltage anyway, so there's not much point putting an LED on that. So yeah, that's all we basically have. Obviously, a lot of that stuff's live, 240 volt level stuff, so you don't want to go touching any of that got that NTC thing there which might be a varista or something to protect it from surges or it may be some other thing but yeah generally not a bad little unit so I'll have to put this to use and try it out and see how it goes but I think this should do the job rather well I'm not going to be using it an awful lot but um, yeah, if it's going to cop a lot of heat a lot of the time, it's possible some of these capacitors could start failing. But that'd probably take years to do anyway. Okay, just have a look at the, uh, the manual for it. Uh, it's got English, German, French, Spanish, Italian. Step chart for constant voltage. Okay, it just tells you what to. What to adjust, that's all pretty obvious from looking at it. Statutory 
National and European requirements, ensure safe operation, reserve the manual. It can output and display constant voltage and constant current to more than 5 volt, volt output voltage with USB, cooling fan, over temp protection, overload protection. Now we've got a list of what all the parts are. Constant voltage mode. Tells you to turn all the knobs to minimum before using, whoever listens to that. I guess if you're going to hook a load up to it, it might be a good idea, but generally you'd set it. Working mode is decided by the load current and traction current. In constant voltage mode, the current is determined by the load. The larger the load, the smaller is the current. What? <laughs> it's a constant voltage mode, that's just just normal mode, you set the voltage and you hook a load up to it turn all knobs to minimum press the power switch turn the course current regulators clockwise to maximum yeah voltage regulator and find so the desired output voltage always press the power switch and shut it off before connecting the positive output terminal or negative output terminal with a load or similar component then switch it on okay normally you wouldn't worry about that output voltage will be displayed the current can't be changed because it's basically set to maximum the working mode is decided by the load current and the traction current in constant voltage mode the current is determined by the load obviously whatever you load it up with like this light bulb pulls about 20 watts the larger the load the smaller is the current well that goes against the laws of physics so I don't know what they're talking about there constant current mode connect the positive output term and the negative output term with a wire one included and bring it to a short circuit that's right you can actually short the the power supply out Turn the course voltage regulator clockwise to maximum. Of course, current regulator and fine current regulator anti clockwise to minimum. Press the power switch on, and the light, the constant current light LED, or I should say, comes on. Turn the course current regulator and fine clockwise to that you are desirous of output current value. Always press the power switch and shut it off. So, in other words, if you short it out, you can set the current that it will provide the output current will be displayed the voltage can't be changed the working mode is decided by the load of current and traction current again the constant current in constant current mode the voltage is determined by the load the smaller the load the smaller the voltage so the more you load you put on it, does that make sense? Yeah, so it's 110 to 130 volts or 220 to 240 volts, 60 hertz. Should be the other way around, 110, 130 volts should be at 60 and 240 to 2, uh, 220 to 240 should be at 50 hertz. So there's probably bad translation like usual in these manuals. Output current range, 8 to 10 amps, 8 to 30 volts voltage, USB puts out 5 volted up to 2 amps, power supply effect, load effect, ripple and noise, less than or equal to 20 millivolts in constant voltage, and same in constant current, or 20 milliamps, or 20 millivolts, right, 4 digit LED display, Humidity, do not attempt to repair it, placing the fuse, three years warranty, whether they will actually cover that if it does fail. So hopefully they so you can actually contact them here, so they do have an email address, so maybe outside of eBay regardless of the eBay seller, and now we're into the German etc so you might have a three-year warranty 
possibly you still have to pay postage to send it to them and get it back again so that could get towards the price of a new one I guess depending what it's like but it's good they offer that anyway and yeah I'm not sure this manual is 100% correct so we could try the actual constant current mode so I saying you set the voltage to maximum short the pins together and set that to minimum I think yes yeah, so we're in constant current and as we turn that up uh, it tells you how many amps it can supply so if we set that to around an amp let's hook it up to a light globe Ooh, I think it just blew it <laughs> and it put out 32 volts and popped my light globe so what they said the more the less the less current the higher the voltage I think that's what that must mean the smaller the load the smaller the voltage so we put a big voltage I see so it's trying to up the voltage to get that current so it keeps raising the voltage until it vaporizes my filament so there goes my 12 volt indicator globe well at least we know it's got plenty of power but anyway thanks for watching